go down with this. Oh my god. Go down the corner to look for that. Let's go look for it first. Alright. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. The Niagara Falls Comic Con. Wow. <laughs> what a fantastic event. I had a great time. I mean, I knew I was going to have a good time. Uh, these guys, they put on a really good show. They're really good organizers. My only complaint is they're getting a bit expensive. Last year it was um, $25 to get in, and this year they jacked the price up to $40. And also parking was a bit hard. We have to park way down the street at the Falls View Casino. It was like a 15, 20 minute walk to get to the convention center. Check this out. I picked this up while I was there. It's uh, one of Flash Gordon mini bust. Ain't that nice? That's uh, a limited edition. 2,500 units. Mine is number 107, so 1,070 out of 2,500 units. I love the detail on that. I think that's just so really, really nicely made. Anyway, so that's one of the things I picked up. As you, as you can see by the footage I shot at this, year's, this week's convention, very busy, very busy, pretty much sold out. Um, what I'll do is I'm, we're going to go over there, I'm going to show you some of the books that I picked up while I was there. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to show you a little bit more of the footage I shot while I was at the, at the con. Uh, hope you'll like it. So yeah, let's not uh, waste any more time. Let's go over there and take a look at what I got. Okay, so let's just get started here. Now this is something you won't see in my collection very often. This is a CGC book. Uh, the only reason I picked it up is I, I saw it at the con for 25 bucks, and I figured for that price, what the hell, I might as well pick it up. It's, uh, you know, issue 229 of Wonder Woman. came out March 1977. It's the first appearance of General Blankenship. And uh, for a book like this in near mint condition, or uh, it's going to, I think it's... Uh, I think it's around $19 on the comic book realm. So if you can pick up a CGC copy for $25, hell, you can't really go wrong. So I, so I, I saw it and I grabbed it. And Weird Wonder Tales number four. I was actually thinking about saving this for a Halloween, but I figured, what the hell. Is that a cool cover? It's a Jack Kirby cover. Well, actually, if you go to Marvel Wiki, it says Jack Kirby, but there's also, like, four other artists also listed as doing the cover, one of them being uh, John Romita as well. Now, the inside work is done by, um, I don't know if all the inside work is done by him, but a lot of the inside work is done by uh, Steve Ditko, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this art, this, this one came out in March, uh, no, I think it was January 1974. Now, as you can see, this cost me 10 bucks. Uh, it's not really worth that much more than that. I think if you go to the realm, it's listed for $16. In fact, I know it's listed for $16. But I like the weird, you know, the weird books, the, you know, the, fan, the fantasy horror type books. So if I see them in good condition, I usually pick them up. And for $10, I figure I can't go wrong. And Green Lantern number 61, June 1968. Isn't that a great cover? That's uh, Gil Kane and Sid Green. I think a lot of the inside artwork's done by Gil Kane as well. Now, again, nothing special about the book. It's not a key or anything, but it's just it's a nice Silver Age book that's in good condition, and I liked it. It wasn't too expensive. I think it cost me, you know, 22, 23 bucks. You know, obviously, I'm at the convention. We're looking around at the different vendors. We're looking for keys, hoping to find some good deals, but there's not a lot out there right now. So, uh, you know, you take what you can get. You pick up some good books, but, you know, that you can afford, right? And uh, so I'm going to be concentrating on just some, some nice silver, Bronze Age books. If it's a key, fine. If it's not a key, if there's no first appearance, that's not going to deter me from buying it. I'm just uh, looking for cool books that I like. And Green Lantern number uh, 42. This is from June 1966. Another Gil Kane cover. I think uh, Gil Kane and Murphy Anderson. 
This is now the oldest Green Lantern I have in my collection. Now it's not a bad book. I mean, there's a minor key in it. I think it's I think it's I think it's a minor first appearance. It's first appearance of the Warlock of Wise, and I think it also says the first appearance of Patch Eye Pete. But I think it might be Patch Eye Pete's only <laughs> only appearance, so that's hard, probably not even worth mentioning. But anyways, yeah, I picked this up at the con. It cost me thirty bucks. Uh, not a bad price. I mean, I think in near mint, this book will run you around. Well, it says on the realm it'll run you 150. I don't know that it's really worth that. Now, obviously, this one ain't near mint, but it's not a bad looking copy. And I like the cover, so I figured I'd pick it up. And it wouldn't be me if I didn't show at least one ghost book. I picked this up this weekend. If you keep watching these videos, eventually you'll see the entire ghost collection. And uh, this was issue 93, came out, in, uh, came out in October 1980. As you can see what I pay for that, six bucks. I think I gave them five. It's not worth much more than that. I think the Realms got it listed for eight. But like I said, I got to collect them all. And every time I go out, I come back with one or two books. And this is the one book I came back with this weekend. <laughs> okay, I just have to show this one one more time. Actually, I showed this last year. I think it was actually one of my very first videos I did. This is, uh, we all know, Strange Tales number 180. I saw this on the wall at the convention this weekend, and I couldn't believe the prices. Uh, last year, I think I paid about 10 bucks for it, and the price on this book is up to like $350. Now, this is, this is typical of what I'm talking about, about the prices getting out of control. Now you couldn't have given, two years ago, you couldn't have given this book away. Or at the very most, you'd probably find it in the $5 bin. But now you got guys out there asking $350. This is the uh, first appearance of Grimora. This is a really nice book I have, but I just can't see it sustaining that price. So if any of you guys want it and willing to pay me $350, bucks, send me an email. I'll probably sell it to you. Anyways, back, back to what we were doing here. Back to what we were doing. Okay, and I just thought I'd show you this because I got a real kick out of it. This is uh, Batgirl doing the uh, the Purple Rain thing. This is the May 2015 issue. Uh, it was one of those DC promotions where they started doing renditions of classic movies like uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, Bullet, oh, all kinds, Lost Boys, all kinds of movies. But this is, the, this is the one, this is the Purple Rain cover. And I thought it was really, really cool done. So I, I got a kick out of it. I thought I'd show it to you. I'm going to take a break here. Just tell you a little bit more about my, my weekend at the Comic-Con. Uh, like last year, we drove up for the day. Uh, Niagara Falls, nice little drive. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half to get there. A really, really good event, and the organizer did a really good job putting on the show. Had a really excellent guest list, too. Far better than uh, the Toronto Comic-Con had last month. Uh, some of the guests included uh, David Hasselhoff, uh, Sean Astin, uh, Billy D. Williams... Uh, Scott Wilson was there. He was the older guy in The Walking Dead. I think they killed him off in Season 4. Uh, Margot Kidder was there. Richard Hatch from the original Battlestar Galactica. There's some wrestling celebrities as well there. And, um, yeah, so really good. I mean, I, I, if you compare it to the guests as the Fan Expo, it's like night and day. And Nichelle Nichols was also supposed to be there, but as I'm sure we all know, she had a stroke, just a minor one, so hopefully she's going to be okay. So she had to cancel at the last minute, hoping, hoping she'll be fine. Maybe she'll show up at the Fan Expo at the end of the summer. But that was too bad that that, uh, that happened to her, but everything hopefully will be okay. So yeah, we had a really good time. A lot of different comic vendors there, and I think I might have mentioned this at the beginning. The prices are better than the conventions in Toronto, at least I think they are. But, um, you know, they're still not good. They're still pricey, and uh, parking was a real issue. We had to park down at the Falls View Casino, which is about a 20-minute walk, because uh, they completely sold out this year, and the parking lot was full. And we got there at, um, I think we were there at like noon, or one o'clock in the afternoon. So we were there relatively early. You'd think you'd get parking at that time, but None, none whatsoever. The parking lot was completely full, and here, obviously, here is some of the footage I shot, and uh, and uh, it was a, it was a great time, and I think this will be a convention we'll be going to every single year from here on in. And Darth Vader number three. This is actually like three issues ago now, but I had to show it. People have been going absolutely ape shit over this book, 
And that's because, uh, you know, Chicky there is on the front cover. She's going to be in the new Star Wars film, so uh, when this book came out, people went absolutely crazy over it, buying copy after copy. I actually had to buy mine in the secondary market, which kind of pissed me off. I paid $15 for it, but I had to have it. And the reason I, you know, I don't have a pull list of my local comic book store. I just like to go out every Wednesday and pick them up myself. You know, and the reason I don't have a pull list is because, you know, a lot of time when the books were pulled for me, they'd be damaged. I don't want a book that's got a crease or a dent in the corner. So I just figured it'd be, you know, better to pull my own books. The disadvantage is, of course, when a hot book comes out, if you're not at the comic book store on the Wednesday morning, you know, sometimes you don't get it. But uh, anyways, it is what it is. And what the hell, you know, I've shown the first four, I might as well show the final printing as well. This is the fifth and hopefully the final printing of Star Wars number one. So that's it, I've got all uh, five copies of them, some in duplicate. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the last book, guys. I think that's all I'm going to show you for today. So once again, I hope you liked it. Hope you liked the footage, I uh, hope you hope you liked my, um, my Niagara Comic Con special. And I'm going to end it by showing you some more of the footage that I shot while I was there at the Comic-Con this weekend. And uh, again, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. This is from here? Yeah. Yeah, winner! You won! Let's see if we can get the big prize.